Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. This week we are talking again about the Presonus Studio Live 64S. Presonus was nice enough to let us borrow one for a summer camp. And uh, I want to do a quick video on how I would set up a base scene for this uh, with the knowledge that I now have from, from using it in the field. Um, so I'm going to make this video as fast as I possibly can. Um, hopefully you can keep up. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them below in our YouTube comment section, and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Um, so we're going to be moving real quick. Uh, I've got channel one selected. And what I want to do is I want to set some basics for this channel that I can apply across all the input channels. So looking at channel one, I'm going to select my gate. I'm going to turn the gate on. I'm going to set it to an expander so it's a little bit more forgiving. And we're going to start with the gate on for every channel, and I can always turn it off if I don't need it somewhere. But it's set super weak, so it's not really doing much. Compression, I'm going to turn the compressor to be after the EQ, turn it on, and I'm going to set the ratio a little bit stronger at 3 to 1. EQ, we're going to turn it on. We're going to turn the high and low into shelving rather than parametric. Uh, we are going to be using this in what I call studio mode, um, studio style mixing, where everything's going to basically go to uh, our main left-right mix in mono um, at the same level, and we'll use our high-pass filter to remove things from the subs if we need to. So for that to work, I'm going to go ahead and put everything in the mono center bus, which defaults at 0, 0.0, so that will do exactly what we want it to do. Uh, now let's go up here to this little cogwheel. We're going to remove the name. And then if it's in stereo, I want the names to link. And that should be everything. So we're about to copy and paste this to everything. Before I do that, I'm going to click this load settings and advanced filters, copy and paste, and turn off faders and mutes. The reason why I'm doing this is because uh, some of these channels we're going to paste over are our effects returns, which are already set at 0, 0.0. I'm gonna leave those that way for workflow reasons. Um, so this will copy everything we just uh, changed, but not the fader and mute settings, which we haven't played with. All right, so now I'm gonna go to, uh, to copy. And you'll see a bunch of our channels are flashing, but channel one, which is selected, is not flashing. So I'm gonna select all these channels, which is going to take me a second here. Next. Next again. And I'm not going to do it on our talk back because that might mess up me talking to you. Okay, now I'm going to hit load. And all those channels, they now have the settings that we just set. So all of our input uh, channels are now set to do what we want. Um, let's go over and configure our, um, our mixes. So this console has a ton of what they call flex mixes. These can be uh, auxiliaries for wedges or in-ears. They can be subgroups if you want to do uh, parallel compression or group processing, or they can be matrices for sending around to different speaker sets around your church. Um, right now, they're all generically set to auxiliary. We're going to set the first 16 to be eight um, stereo uh, aux mixes for in-ears. We're going to set the next eight to be uh, four uh, stereo subgroups, and then the last eight will be eight mono matrices. So that's just a generic way to start, just so our base scene can be good to go. So to do all that, we're going to select our first channel. I'm going to go ahead and set the link button on everything that's going to be stereo. So that's over here, and you'll see, hopefully you can see this. Sorry, this mic's in the way. When I hit link, now these two are lit up. So there's our first four groups. Here's our next four. Here's our subgroups. Okay, and then we're going to leave our matrices 
and modern. The reason why you're seeing levels is because my talk back is going to all these right now. Okay, so on to our uh, stereo in ears one. We're going to do basically the same processing. So we're going to go, there is nothing on the gate. Compression, we're going to set before, sorry, after the EQ on three to one. Probably won't use this, but it's good to have it available and to have the same settings as everything else. EQ on shelving. Cool. Um, let's remove the name. We want names to link. And we're going to set this to pre-2, which is basically your typical pre-fade um, sins, which unfortunately on this board is set at the... Um, at the mix level and not at the individual channel level. So that's why we're doing it this way. Cool. All right, we're going to go over here and again, copy. Sorry if you can't see this. I'm just going to do it on the first of these. Load. Okay. All right, so all of our ears are ready. Let's go to our subgroups. We're gonna change that to be a subgroup. Okay, and again, copy. Oh, and actually, sorry. Also, we need to put that in the mono center mix. Copy. There we go, load. Okay. And then finally for our matrices, we're going to go to matrix and set that to post. Copy. Load. Okay. So now we have our inputs and our outputs all configured. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at our effects. Uh, so down here we have uh, four effects buttons. Each one uh, is two different effects. So um, we got A through H. Uh, as a starting point, we're gonna set A to be our drum reverb, B our band reverb, C our vocal reverb, and D a stereo delay for our vocals. Now, one thing that really bothers me about the Personas mixer, um, this is not a big deal, but the presets they give you are not great. Um, so, the van setting does sound like a van, but that's not something I really want to use um, on a regular basis, <laughs> if ever. So I'm going to go ahead and change all these reverbs just for generic settings to the second option, the PAE 16. That rock snare hall setting sounds pretty good. It's a good starting point. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that for A, B, and C. Okay, let's move on to our uh, stereo delay, which is kind of a um, tricky thing to say because it's not technically in stereo right now because uh, we have two milliseconds set to both left and right, uh, and then the spread is set to zero. So right now it's really a very fast dual mono um uh, slapback reverb technically. So w one thing that's really missing from this board is musical timing. Um, so we're going to trick it into working. We're going to set A to be a quarter note and B to be a dotted eighth note. And the easiest way to do that is we're going to take A, crank it up to two seconds, and then um, anytime you want to figure out a dotted eighth note, it's just going to be the A times 0.75. So we're going to set B to one and a half seconds, 1.5. And once we add in a tap tempo, it will maintain the relative distance between um, those two times and effectively give us uh, the timing we're looking for. Um, as a generic setting, we're gonna take feedback A and set this to 40. And feedback B, which is our shorter one, and set that to 50. Spread, if you go all the way to 100% is in you know, actual stereo. Uh, we're going to just kind of meet in the middle a little bit. I'm going to go to 75, maybe even 50, depending on how, uh, how obvious I end up running these delays. But as a default, this is much, much better than what Personas gives you. Um, this is a very usable delay. 
the filters at the bottom, I'm going to leave them alone for the purpose of a base scene. Um, but I would typically run those about 12 o'clock. That will give you kind of a lo-fi, mid-rangey um, delay, which is kind of cool. Um, so let's leave that for now. Let's go ahead and set up a tap tempo and make sure that our tempos are working okay. So I'm going to go to the home button, system, user buttons, and then number eight, tap tempo. There's not a global tap tempo as far as I'm aware, but we're going to set that to D, which is the tempo or the uh, delay we're just playing with, and save. And you should now notice that my number eight is flashing in time. Let's give it a faster setting than two seconds. And if we go back to our D effect, you can see now that the tempo has changed. So if I tap in a tempo, 546, if we were to multiply that by 0.75, would be very close to 409, um, maybe rounded up by one. So that is doing what we wanted to do. And there you go. We have now set up the inputs, the outputs, uh, and some basic effects. Uh, I haven't named anything, but of course, you don't really need to watch me do all that. Um, I hope this has been helpful for you. These are uh, definitely going to save you a lot of time if you're going to set up this mixer. Um, this mixer has a ton of I.O. for being under $5,000. Uh, and with that, you know, you just need to be able to work quickly. And I find that doing these things will really help you to do that. So if you have any questions or things that you've done at your church that you think would be helpful to share, uh, please feel free to leave those below. Um, definitely check out this mixer. Again, it's the Personas Studio Live 64S. Until next time, have a great week. Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.